I will be doing the invocation. Mr. Bailey will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. <coughs> Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for your great goodness towards us. We ask you to be with the Marion Council this evening as they go about the public business. Lead, guide, and direct them. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> The first item of business this evening is the swearing in of Mr. Mike Ashburn, Mr. Richard Bailey, and Ms. Donna Frederick as members of the City Council. If y'all would come forward, Judge Victor Manning will be swearing in Mr. Ashburn and Ms. Frederick, and I will be swearing in Mr. Bailey. Ms. Phillips, will you give us the roll call, please? Mr. Dahl? Here. Ms. Tolliver? Mr. Ashburn? Here. Mr. Bailey? Here. Ms. Frederick? Here. We have a quorum and are prepared to conduct business. I understand Ms. Tolliver is ill. First item is to adopt the agenda. Do I hear a motion we adopt the agenda? I might get motion. Motion by Mr. Ashburn. Is there a second? I second. 
Second has been received. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. The ad agenda is adopted. <clears throat> the next item is new business. The election of council president. Is there a nomination for council president of this council? I'd like to nominate Richard Bailey. Mr. Bailey has been nominated. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Assuming there are none, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor of Mr. Bailey, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Mr. Bailey is elected. The next item on the agenda is the election of City Council President Pro Tempore. Is there a nomination? I'd like to nominate Mike Ashburn. Mr. Ashburn has been nominated. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? There being none, I assume you're ready for a vote. All in favor of Mr. Ashburn as President of the Council Pro Tempore, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Congratulations, Mr. Ashburn. Next thing on the agenda is to elect the council member to the planning commission. Do I have a nomination for the planning commission? I make a motion to nominate Mr. Ashburn to the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ashburn, is there any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm sorry, I need to do a roll call vote on this. Yes, Ms. Sir. Phillips, can you do a roll call vote? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mr. Ashburn? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Frederick? Yes. Thank you. And four, we need the election of members to the Solid Waste Disposal Authority. So I'll need nominations to add everyone to the solid waste. Will we have to do it individually or can we say the, the whole <clears throat> council? The appropriate motion would be to reelect those members being the mayor, Ms. Mr. Dahl, Ms. Tolliver, and Ms. Phillips and elect Mr. Bailey, Mr. Ashburn, and Ms. Fredericks. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve that? I'll make that motion. Okay. All right, well, the nomination for that. Mr. Ashburn, will you nominate that? I do. Okay. So having all those nominated, let's see, ask for a roll call vote again. Ms. Phillips, could you do that? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mr. Ashburn? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Frederick? Yes. Okay. That will conclude the organizational meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn from the organizational meeting? I make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the organizational meeting? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. Just give me just a second and we'll go straight into the work session. We'll call this work session Monday, November 7th to order. We'll dispense with formalities and move straight into number one. Number one is a public hearing for an alcohol license for Jeffersons of Scottsboro. This is the time and place for a public hearing. Anyone here for this? Thank you. Anyone here against this? No one here against this. Ms. Phillips, will you do the investigation report? 
The applicant is David Carula, top of license, restaurant, retail, liquor, class one, doing business as Jefferson Scottsboro, located at 1402 County Park Road, Suite 2B. There were five businesses surveyed with no objections. The nearest church and school footage requirements are met. License application is in order. Health, fire, and building inspections comply, and zoning verification complies. Thank you. I didn't get an email with the new access. So, but before we move on from that, we'll uh, this will conclude the public hearing, and we'll put that on next week's meeting for a vote. Um, the on the screen is going to be a little bit different than tonight. I don't have the newest. We changed some things up today. Uh, number two is the Scottsboro Board of Education request. Ms. Childress, we can go over that. It's good to see you. Um, thank you for allowing me to address you uh, tonight regarding a matter of great importance to our city schools. As you may know, the school system is funded in part by 7.5 mil tax approved by voters in the city in March of 1994. This tax is authorized by Amendment 8 to the Constitution of Alabama and has been essential for funding our schools for almost 30 years. However, unless renewed, the last levy and collection of this tax will occur on October 1st, 2023. For that reason, the board has engaged the firm of Brantley Arant, which also serves as bond counsel to the city, to help the board and the city with the legal requirements for calling an election on the renewal of the Amendment 8 school tax. In consultation with legal counsel, the board considered and approved a resolution last week to request that the city council call a special election to be held on February 28, 2023 for the purpose of seeking approval of Scottsboro citizens for renewal of the existing 7 point mill Amendment 8 school tax. If the council agrees to call and hold the proposed election and the voters approve the renewal of this tax, it would then be levied and collected through October 1, 2052. It is very important to note and understand that this is not a request for a new tax. This is simply a request to extend the levy and collection of the existing 7.5 mil Amendment 8 school tax that is an essential part of the funding of Scottsboro City Schools. That said, on behalf of the Scottsboro City Board of Education, I present to you copies of the resolution of the board requesting that the council act to call a special election to be held on February 28th 2023 for the purpose of renewing and extending the levy of the existing 7.5 mil Amendment 8 school tax. We thank you so very much for your past and continued support of Scottsboro City Schools. Thank you, Ms. Childers. Anyone have any questions on this? This is just a continuation of what's already there. No questions? With a special okay. election, there'll be some cost incurred on this. Uh, Yes, and we understand that since we are asking for this election that the city that the school board be responsible for those costs. Okay, just this is an accounting question. Will the Board of Education be paying these expenses direct like to the poll workers and so on or will the city do it and the board reimburse? And I'm not sure but our CSFO is in here <laughs> so she can probably help us answer that question. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No other questions. We'll put that on next week's meeting. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. We'll move to number three, Impact Learning Center's request to Dr. Bradford. Mayor McCamey, ladies and gentlemen of the Scottsford City Council, my name is Charles Bradford. I'm chairman of the Jackson County 21st Century Council, better known to most of y'all as IMPACT. 
I'm here tonight on behalf of Impact to thank the City of Scottsboro for the lease and use of your building on John T. Reed Parkway, which you have graciously let us use for the last 10 years. Your generosity has given our organization a platform to provide many educational opportunities for our community, most recently funding our Dolly Parton Preschool Reading Initiative. Thank you. We have received over three quarter of a million dollars in grants since our beginning in 1992. Grants from the Appalachia Regional Commission, United States Department of Agriculture, State of Alabama, Google, and the Bynum Foundation. Grants that have enabled impact to establish and apply and receive a video teleconferencing program for our county and our city, 29 Promethean boards, $50,000 to bolster school security, $50,000 for Orton Gillingham, a dyslexia project for remedial learning, a mobile computer lab, Skills on Wheels, which takes state of the art computer education to all of industry and communities in our county. When the City Board of Education deferred to start pre K education, Impact provided pre K to over 400 children for 10 years. Without the support of the City of Scottsboro, none, I repeat, none of this would have happened. I will close with the jaw-dropping figure. According to the 1990 census, 42% of the people, almost one half of the citizens of Jackson County, did not have a high school education. I repeat that. One half of the people that lived in Jackson County did not have a high school education. One in seven were functionally illiterate meaning they could not read well enough to read the prescription on their medicine bottle. 30 years later, according to the 2020 census, that number has dropped from one out of two people not having a high school diploma to one out of five. Ten years ago, your predecessors on the Scottsboro City Council made an investment in our city's future. We had impact feel that we have been good stewards of that investment. Tonight, I'm here to ask you to make a reinvestment by renewing Impact's lease on your property on John T. Reed Parkway. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Dr. Brever. Anyone have any questions on the lease? No question. We'll put Dr. that on. Dr. Brever, thank you for what Impact's doing. How many thank years you. is the lease? Five. I, I, five. How many years was the last lease? Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. No other questions. We'll put that on next week's meeting. <coughs> right, number four, discuss the approval of the remaining 10% of the budget. I'm, I'll go over this, Rick. Uh, the remaining 10% is $2,520,787. And this will conclude with having a balanced budget again for the next year. And this is a total budget of $24,972,198 for the next fiscal year. So anyone have any questions about the budget next year? I was hoping not after all the meetings we've had. <laughs> we'll put that on next week's meeting for a vote. Uh, number five, discuss Mint Creek construction and maintenance agreement. Uh, Mr. Little, you can go over that. I each of you have uh, an agreement from the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources in your packet. And uh, basically this is an agreement uh, for the Meat Creek boat launch renovation. Uh, they started that already. Uh, they've done some of that in-house. And they have bid this project um, back in September. And they're asking for a $125,000 commitment towards that project. Also in here is a 30-year, or excuse me, 25-year um, agreement for maintenance on that once they finish that project. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone have any questions on this? Uh, Mr. Wheeler, um, the 125, we've approved that already, have we not? So. Yeah, and so all we need to really approve is the maintenance agreement? Correct. Okay. Anyone have any questions on that? Okay, we'll move out to next week's meeting. Thank you. And number six, discuss the resolution for the one-time pay raise. Mr. Kinnamer, could you go over that, please? <clears throat> A number of years ago, the legislature, in its infinite wisdom, uh, determined that it was illegal for cities to give Christmas bonuses to its employees. Uh, the city attorney at the time, my predecessor, Mr. Joe Lee, was a very smart man and a very good lawyer who came up with the way around it, which means that for the last 40 to 50 years, the city of Scottsboro has given one-time pay raises at Christmas time to its employees. Uh, you have before you a one-time pay raise employee for city of Scottsboro employees for December Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kimmer. And as Mr. Kimmer said, this is 40 years going on, and you see in your packet the amount depending on the years of service. So anyone have any questions on the one-time pay raise? All right. We'll move that to next week's meeting. Thank you. Number seven, discuss the resolution to award equipment financing bid. Ms. Phillips, will you go over that? We are in need of financing a garbage truck and a dump truck. We posted one bid, hand-delivered five bids, and received three bids for the financing. Um, we would like to, rec the Bid Review Committee recommends that the bid be awarded to First Jackson Bank at a rate of 3.03%. Yep. Okay. You see in your packet the amounts and the low bid. Is there any questions on that? Here and then we'll move that to next week's meeting. And number eight, discuss the traffic signal invoice for Highway 72 at Scottsboro Commons. And you'll see in your package you have an invoice for $75,131.40. This is a signal we've already approved. We just need to approve the money to pay it. And this is the Whataburger lot. So. Anyone have any questions on the amount or the signal? Hearing none, we'll move that to next week's meeting also. That will conclude the meeting. We'll go into delegations. Mr. Cooper. You're first. Uh, thanks for your time. I'm here. Um, with the concerns of the new fire ordinance y'all set in place and the effects that it causes any of us builders, any developers, um, it's costing us a whole lot more money than what it should. The equipment that we're having to rent is all the way in Huntsville. Uh, the cost on that's 5,000 a month. It's, it's, it's a large inconvenience to something that we have not caused a problem from to begin with. Um, the biggest thing I'm here asking is y'all to reconsider and set a new ordinance in place that is going to be good for us, the small business owner, any of us builders. Um, that's, that's our issue. Um, it's just costing us a lot of money. A lot of money with a tight budget on building already and prices of everything that we have no control of. Uh, diesel fuel went up to 569 today. OSB is going to be $40 in a few weeks. We can't control that. We're, we're asking for y'all's help to control what we can. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Cooper? I'm going to give him a chance. Uh, I've got Mr. Wilkes who wants to speak on the same thing. And so, and then I was going to let Chief Nicholas uh, explain a little bit about the fire ordinance afterwards. You want to go ahead and I'll let you speak on the same thing before. I can't really say anything much more than he did other than we're almost at rainy season. 
I do land clearing, by the way. So once rainy season gets here, I'm hauling all my brush from Scottsboro to Hollywood right now. Once rainy season gets here, I'm out of business. I cannot, I mean, you gotta think once the fields gets wet, can't get a dump truck in there to dump brush. I've burnt brush in Scottsboro for years and never had a bit of issue. This right here, I mean, like he said, you can't afford diesel fuel to work already. And now it's $5,000 a month to work in Scottsboro. When I had concerns with the fire department and spoke with the mayor, I was told from the fire department pretty much just figuring $150 a load for land clearing, for brush trucks, city brush trucks. So instead of me burning it, I'm supposed to pay city brush trucks $150 a load to haul the brush from stuff. So uh, say a two acre job that would have been three, four thousand dollars before, you're supposed to figure in brush trucks on top of that, and I'm still trying to supposed to keep a business running and everything. It's just it's a super inconvenience, and it flat out don't work. I mean, I, I don't really know anything else to say other than that. But I mean, it's not even rentable locally. You have to drive out of town to get one. And so, I, mean, I that's, think that's that was the biggest concern. Yes, yeah. it's, it's it's killing businesses mm -hmm. that deal with pretty much all of this. Yeah. So. I mean, that's, I would love for y'all to reconsider it. It worked great when it was a burn a pile the size of a car. Okay. I mean, I can burn, I can burn so much brush at the size of a car in a day. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if people were burning bigger brush piles, because my, what I heard from, I don't remember who it was from, somebody city related, it was because of the burning behind or by Dunham's the all the smoke from all that so why not limit pile size hmm. instead of implementing something that has to come from out of town how much is it to rent that equipment it's fifteen hundred dollars a week well depending on where you call us pretty much fifteen hundred dollars a week or five thousand dollars a month and nowhere around here local rents it because they can't get insurance on them because Who's going to put insurance on a piece of equipment that's made to set by a fire and burn? So it's just, it's super inconvenient. And I mean, we're already having enough trouble making money as it is trying to keep costs low, paying diesel fuel on equipment and stuff like that. This right here is just flat out, put everybody out. How many loads, just say on an average clear, would you have to haul off at 100? I actually dollars? made a post on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. It was a, it was a one acre job that I did. My dump truck is pretty much the same size as the city brush trucks. And my dump truck had 16 loads off of one acre. And that wasn't even a big grown up acre. So, I mean, I couldn't really tell the- 16 loads at $150 a load? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I couldn't really tell the customers, hey, um, we're gonna have the city haul this off. It's just 16 times 150. Cause Scottsboro don't have hunts with money. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much how it is. They're, the people around here don't have the same money that Huntsville does, so how are we implementing Huntsville's laws into Scottsboro, especially burn laws? Because I was told it was roughly figured out from Huntsville laws. So is a truckload about the size of a car to burn? No, no. How many truckloads? A, a, a one dump truck load would be about... My dump truck would be about four, the size of four cars, I would say, maybe five, depending on how tall the brush is, how much limbs and stuff's on it. And that's the way it used to be, the yes. ordinance. Okay. I mean, it used to it'd be burnt on site if, as long as it wasn't right next to a house or, you know, as long as it was an appropriate distance from a house, it should be Did burnt on site. require a permit? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I called and got a permit every single time and it, it worked out incredible. And I even asked the fire department when I had them come out and check the last job, as I seen the new laws, I had the fire department come out and check the, my last job or the last job I was going to do in Scottsboro. And, um, they pretty much, I asked them why I couldn't use leaf blowers, backpack blowers, one on each end of the fire. So, you know, putting air into a, into a trench, like a trench burner where what's the fire curtain. And they couldn't tell me any CFMs of what a trench burner flows. Um, they weren't li willing to listen to any compromises, I guess you should say. So, I mean, I was pretty much just told, deal with it. And I would love to continue doing business in Scottsboro, but 
I mean, flat out, I've not done any work in Scottsboro in two months now. I've had to move elsewhere. No, I did. I did one job where I hauled all the brush. But other than that, I've been working out of, out of Scottsboro because I can't afford to work in Scottsboro now. It's too much to haul all the brush off. And I mean, like I said, here before long, once it starts raining, I can't even haul brush off. So, well, that's it. I would love for y'all to reconsider and go back to the way it was, honestly. That would very much help businesses. And as far as the, what's it called, a curtain? If we Pretty had smarter. if we had a curtain, is that something that would help? If you had one, if we had, because it seems like we got the horse, the cart before the horse on this, and if you don't have something that you need to, with our ordinance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If we had one, would that fix when, when the problem? You say if you had one, what if do you the mean? city had one, no, because you're going to have to have twenty. Okay. For you know every business that's going to need one. Now I've spoken with Tim Allen uh, at Tim Allen Rents. Uh -huh. He he said this was brought up many many years ago, and uh, he checked on his insurance and his insurance company won't even cover it because like I said it's it's a literally mm -hmm. a diesel machine you put next to a fire. Yeah. No insurance company is going to cover that. Okay. So all right, it just it, it hurts. I would love okay. to continue serving people in Scottsboro, but okay, can't. All right, thank you. Um, Dean, you got anything you want to mention on it? Oh, yeah, just a little bit. I appreciate these guys coming because um, I do understand. I was a proponent of this ordinance. I still am. Um, the intent uh, was to deal with an issue. I know maybe they didn't see it, but we certainly saw it, of uh, the nuisance created um, around Burns. And that's been going over 25 years that I've been at the fire department in some form or fashion. We've been trying to deal with that. Um, and the intent was to reduce that. I understand, again, their position that this is an inconvenience to them, but I can guarantee you whenever that house is built or whatever occupies that land that they're working on, whoever's occupying it would have complaints and issue about a nuisance from an unabated burn beside them. So, you know, it's, it's, it, that's a balance yeah, yeah, that we've got I understand. to figure out. We get you were at Lakeside, right? Yeah. So, and, and I didn't, and, and I didn't, I probably didn't make this understood because I didn't really understand the sum. In his instance at Lakeside, that property abates, or, or excuse me, adjoins um, a business and several residences on Clemens Roadside and then abuts some on the backside. Mm -hmm. Under the old way we did it, <clears throat> we tried to police those two around a car size, right, just to keep it in something they could manage. But we also had to follow the regulations of ADEM. And that was a 500 foot radius clearance. Uh, under that old way, he, he, that particular instance, there was no option to burn. He, would, he geographically could not get a 500 foot radius. Um, so in that case, and not in every case, this ordinance actually gave him the option that he didn't have under the old one. Granted, it was have cost money to do it. Um, but now, if I gave the impression that we want people to pay the city to haul off their brush, I'd retract that impression because I don't think that's what we want. I know that's not what Wayne Moore wants. Um, I know they're, they've got all they can do. Um, but you know, that, that's kind of where we're at. I do understand their position, but I also want to express that while this is an inconvenience for them, the other side is an inconvenience for other folks. And I'm having to deal with either one of those inconveniences. So. I'll leave it to the will of the council unless you have questions for me. Well, I, um, I'm like you. I, I get both sides. I, I get hollered at either way we do it. So I don't, I don't know if anyone else gets I, the same. I think when this came up, it had to do with big fires where some of these sites were burning for days, getting in people's houses and stuff like that, you know. Uh, well, and, and I it, understand the perspective, but... Mr. Wilkes talks about, you know, hauling off four car loads or four car size piles at a time and figuring that job to be however many loads he said, 16. Okay, that's, I know he can burn a car load at a time and maybe manage that, but that's a lot of burning if there's four times 16 car loads that are going to have to be burned on that property. Well, that was so my next. So it does go on. I mean, I, I understand what they're saying and I'm not saying they're wrong entirely but i'm saying these operations when you clear a lot does take a considerable amount of time and 
when that smoke starts getting into people's homes uh, or their workplaces or we've had them in hotels and hotels just have to almost shut down because the rooms were filled because of the way the HVACs work. Those are <clears throat> similarly problems we don't want. So, Is there a compromise somewhere in there where small burn piles could be had? I'm, I'm asking. Well, I, uh, I, the hard part is trying to distinguish <laughs> Um, what small is yeah right and then you and then how how long does what do you what do you let go and what do you don't if you, you you don't clear a lot and have less than a car size load all right a pile uh, so you're gonna have multiple of those that have to be burnt whether they're burnt in small doses or big doses it's gonna make smoke and it's gonna smoke in the neighborhood I don't know where you draw that line um, precisely other than Land clearing for development is one thing, and personal yard maintenance is another thing, and that's where that line was drawn in the ordinance. Um, Couldn't we evaluate uh, during the permit process each burn and dictate to them one pile per day? Or well, for for land clearing, he's he he he's suggesting that. You know, you we send somebody out to your site and then your site and then your site and and evaluate it. I I think we're going to run in. We're going to. The way the ordinance was before, when we started clearing that property off a year ago, we pushed everything 500 foot away from any building, and that cost us you know five six thousand dollars on equipment. Obviously, you know, burning in a in a residential area with a lot of homes would be a concern that the smoke will go in the homes but again if, if they're the only thing I would ask council is that there are clear lines that we can enforce I don't want to send my folks out or me go out and try to enforce a muddy on a muddy ambiguous ordinance and and that's why I'm a proponent of this ordinance or some other ordinance that is at least clear cut so that I know and I'm not telling this guy or something and Mr. Wilkes something else and somebody else something else and then they're they're making notes and then I look like the bad guy. Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. Um, so with all that being said, if you're getting complaints, you're talking about hotels and everything. Well, stuff, just right? over the course so of time. If you're having complaints, obviously, I mean, say so I don't. That was that was an issue. All the smoke I don't. So if that was the case, why weren't they shut down? Well, the issue was, I know, and, and, and that's, that's a valid question, and Mayor and I have had this conversation about multiple sites, and then along with two or three other mayors who have had that conversation. Why don't you just go put that fire out? Well, when something like that gets going, that's an operation to put that out. I mean, that's ours. That's thousands of gallons of water when you have one of those piles going. Um, I mean, you know, that's if I can even get to it, because I don't have the equipment. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, with, with that being said, there's excavators on site on, we'll say, 95% of every clearing job. I can put any of my fires that I've ever done out in a matter of 10 minutes with an excavator. So I can't talk about thousands of gallons of water, but I know for a fact that I can put a fire out really quick with an excavator. If I could run an excavator, I could, I could too. I'm not. Well, I'm not well, buying I, you an excavator. I, but, don't, but I don't want an excavator. <laughs> I'm not. And, and I, I, again, I, I get it. And I don't want to debate right here, right yeah, now, yeah. all the nuances of this, okay? Because these folks have things to do. I'm willing to sit down and talk with you guys and mm -hmm. see if there's something, if the council wants me yeah. to do that. Uh, but, again, it's just I need to have, I prefer to have clear lines on what that. we're doing. So, that, so go ahead, Mr. Cooper. My biggest issue and my partner's biggest issue is we went by the guidelines, we went by all the rules, and it cost us thousands of dollars. Now you are telling us we've got to go by a whole different set of rules just a few months later. It's going to cost us $10,000 more. We can't keep going on like this because right now with my partner's out, he said sell everything. We're not doing nothing in Scottsboro. But I'm here in front of y'all because I don't want to stop working in Scottsboro. This, this is where I'm at. I, I have six people that work for me. This is where we're at. We can't just uproot and go somewhere else. We've got to have some kind of compromise. 
because it's it's costing way too much. Well, I understand your position because you started a job in the middle of this. Yes. And so it kind of yeah. Third creators, and we tried, and and, and and probably not successfully enough to what what had been looked at before the ordinance change, even you know maybe filtering over into when the ordinance had changed, yeah. let them go ahead and, and do as much as we could. Yeah. But after that gap in time, and I don't know why that gap occurred. You know, we have to like, we have to you know, go by this. Now, again, I'll, I've got a card here somewhere, and, and if these okay. guys don't have my info, okay. we'll figure out what time to see. Yeah, I think this would be best for y'all to get with him, and then the council's aware of what's going on, and then we can get back and discuss this again. So, sure. All I was going to say is, I feel like we should be able to come up with a, a solution that is <coughs> doable in Scottsboro that don't require going out of town for something. Well, that's what I was suggesting if we had it, would that fix things? If the no, city not, owned not, it. Not completely, because he needs one, I need yeah. one, the CW needs one. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, know, I know five people that would need one yeah. also. Okay. Five other businesses. I mean, one, one last thing. If you're doing a small job, an anchor or something like that, you go spend fifteen hundred dollars a week on an air card and or rig one. The the seat's not going to want to upkeep something that's used by fire for one. I don't think y'all are going to want anything to do with something that literally blows air and fire. That's just a lot of a lot of maintenance. Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right. You make sure you get a number for them and all that. Okay. All right. And then uh, next I have Miss Worthy. Okay. Good evening. Hey. Mayor McCamey and each and every one. <clears throat> I'm June Worthy and uh, it has been brought to my attention about some concerns that have been discussed about July Mountain, which is, that's where I live. I have been up there for 38 years, and we have 22 residents that live up on July Mountain. And it appears to me that the wanting to make some changes in some of the bylaws and whatever for July Mountain. And we are residential and we are in the city. And years ago, July Mountain was not in the city, but we are considered city now. And it's amazing at the number of people that I have had come visit me that have lived here a long time did not realize that July Mountain is in the city. And so our concern is some of the issues that are, you have probably already heard that are coming about. You know, each and every one of you, you build your homes and you invest. That's an investment. And that's what each and every one of us have done. And we don't want anything to mar that with our investment up on July Mountain. And it has brought, been brought to our attention that that could be the possibility real soon. And that's why we are here tonight. And I understand that we're going to have another meeting Thursday night. Is that correct? Mm. To discuss this? No. Uh, council doesn't meet on Thursday uh, night. So you got a zoning was, meeting Thursday? Zoning Board of zoning. Board of zoning. Okay. Yeah. But this is why we wanted to bring this to your attention tonight. Because we have people up there that have been up there from day one and uh, have built beautiful homes if you've ever been up and i consider uh my home is an investment and i certainly don't want to have people coming up there buying a property not building a house but putting a garage or something on it and using it that way we're we I, there's a law for that because we are residential and that's why we are con really concerned okay because well, I would, it can I would depreciate our property very yeah. much well I would suggest you go on Thursday night 
to the zoning. Uh, now, those people are all appointed to those positions, mm -hmm. and the council has nothing to do with those Thursday night meetings. So Fine. Yeah. We'll be there. Okay. Any questions from you about it? Yeah. So, basically, uh, you've got somebody wanting to move up there and just put a, a garage or something. I wasn't aware of any problem up there. Well, you have to build the home first, am I correct? Yes. So, so uh, I, that... You just build a garage on a piece of uh, yes. property so. without a home. So, yeah. you're, the complaint is you don't want them to build a garage on the property? Without a home. And use it as a... When I say garage... It isn't like a garage that you're thinking about where you drive your car into. It is more than that. It can be used for uh, doing odd jobs and people coming up there and getting their little odd jobs done. This is, okay. this is the concern. Okay. Like a business. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So Thursday night, we will be back yeah. to hear that. All right. Any questions from you? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That'll conclude the delegation. So we'll go to reports. Mayor. Uh, the only thing I've got tonight, Mr. President, is to, and I know this has been uh, the Water, Sewer, and Gas Board to put this out already, but just to make sure everyone understands. And this is some of our growing pains, which is good to have, but uh, the water will be off uh, beginning 11 p.m. on Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, on John T. Reed Parkway, um, this will run, uh, Mr. Green, help me out here. This will run from what point? To, County Park Road. To 35? 35. Okay, Sorry. County Park Road to Highway 35. So it'll be off uh, from 11 p.m. until they get the service restored uh, to replace the water line. Now, when you say get the service, we talking hours, we talking days. Hours. Okay, all right, let's make it sure. <laughs> all right. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, well, thank you. And this is part. <laughs> this is part of that work that's being done there in okay. front of, uh, at, at Waterburger. So all right, that's all I've got tonight. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Dahl. I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashman. Just want to say that I uh, appreciate the opportunity to get to serve the citizens of Scottsboro for another term. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Ms. Frederick. Good to see so many people out here tonight. This is my first meeting. It's a great honor and privilege to be up here with this great team, and I'm excited for what the next four years holds. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank the council. Uh, putting me back over here again <laughs> I, I appreciate your support um, we'll go over a little housekeeping uh, next week we will have a meeting and work session on the 14th there'll be no meeting on the 21st and then we'll have a meeting on the 28th and plans are to double up in December <coughs> on the 5th and 12th with work sessions and meetings both those and not meet on the 19th or 26th. So, anyone having questions about the meeting schedule for the rest of the year? 8th and 26th. Not, no not meeting on the 19th or 26th. We'll double up on the 5th and 12th. And and I think the 5th is a rain out date, maybe for the, or no, the 12th would be the rain out date now for the parade, because the parade is gonna be on the 10th. Okay, so well, just in case that's the rain out date, we'll have to hustle through on the 12th to make the parade. <laughs> All right. So that will conclude tonight's meeting. Appreciate everyone coming out. We're adjourned.